Hey guys, Levi here from HammerFab. Today, we're gonna do an unboxing and assembly and install on our rear end housing for our 66 GMC truck. We got some goodies here from GearFX Driveline. These guys are supposed to be making some really cool stuff. I've never used it before, but we're gonna check it out. They've got a racing, uh, racing history, making stuff for NASCAR and stuff like that. This is a nine inch Ford uh, third member. They sent us all the goodies with it, the lube and the kit and everything. So let's check it out. These guys are in North Carolina. Of course, that's where all the NASCAR stuff is. So recently this company, Gear FX Driveline, partnered up with Detroit Speed. Now, a lot of you muscle car guys and stuff are familiar with Detroit Speed and they make quality stuff and they build some really cool cars. So this is their new partner company. And so I don't expect anything less. Look at that. We got a nice little, nice little envelope there for you with information. It's a nice presentation. Stickers, magnets, instructions. They got all kinds of lockers and posi track and how to, how not to. Hopefully we don't need all that. So one of the things that sets these guys apart is their attention to detail. Let's check out some of those details. Very nice padding and everything. So your, your rear end's not gonna get damaged. Look at that. So their third member housings come pre-painted, wire tied, and they come with the, the driveline straps already on there. So you don't have to go looking for all that stuff. It's got a billet yoke on the front here. Super heavy duty. This is the stuff that they're using in NASCAR. It's got the N on there. I think that stands for nodular. I don't know what that means, but. Look at that. That's a nice part right there. Mooresville, North Carolina. So anyways, well, it's got a nice little tag on there with a serial number and everything. So anyways, we're gonna get this guy mocked up in our uh, nine inch uh, housing that we got from Chopping Block. Um, we're gonna get some Dutchman axles put in it and hopefully put some brakes and some wheels on this thing and get it sitting on the ground. So let's try and do that. All right, we've got a few more goodies here to unbox that go with our third member from GearFX Driveline and more peanuts. Okay, let's see, what do we got? We got synthetic racing gear oil, lots of it. Oh, wait a minute, break-in gear oil from Joe Gibbs Racing. That's some serious stuff. There's some more break-in gear oil. Cool, that's nice of them, send some of that with it. Let's put this third member gear unit in the rear end housing. We're just gonna set it on there for now. We'll bolt it all up here in a little bit. This thing's super heavy though, so I don't wanna be moving it too much. There we go. And then you wanna have a jack stand ready on this end because it's gonna wanna flop. There we go. We've got our Gear FX third member mounted in our housing here, four nine inch housing. It says right on the top, made in America, made in the USA. That's what we always like to see. This guy right here is made in the USA. These little brackets are made in the USA. That's what we want. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna just mock this up. We're not gonna seal it or anything like that right now. We're doing the initial mock up to, to make sure we cross our T's and dot our I's. So there's a couple things we're gonna have to do. This is what comes in our uh, uh, kit with the, the housing. So we've got a little, what that guy is right there, it's a little stone breather. See, it's got some brass in the middle of it. And this, this end is pipe threads. It's eighth inch pipe threads. And so what that is, is it's a vent that we need to install in the axle housing, probably somewhere like right in here. You don't, you really, you wanna, and what this is gonna do is just allow the, the axle housing itself to breathe so it doesn't build up too much pressure. 
So once the gear gets moving and it starts building up heat in there, it's going to want to expand. And so if you don't have somewhere for the air inside this housing to expand, it's likely to want to come out, you know, blow oil out of your seals or out of this front seal or something like that, or even out of the gasket. So we don't want that. So we want to have some way to relieve any internal pressure. Um, so right now the housing does not have a spot for this. So we need to make a spot for that. So you also, you don't want it too close. Uh, you don't want it too close to the gear itself because the gear is sloshing around some oil in there and you don't want it to cake this with oil. So we're probably going to put it like over here on this axle tube because the, the vents and the fume, the fumes will vent out through here and that'll be out of the way of everything else. And you want to put it on top so that if any oil does get down in here, it doesn't leak out of the vent. So um, we're going to install that. We'll drill a hole and we've got a pipe tap that we can create those threads in the piece of steel. So we're going to do that. Um, and then we're just going to uh, mock up the housing with the, we've got some AN stainless washers here for that. And we've got nylock lock nuts. So let's put it all together. These bottom two, I don't think we'll be able to get an impact on them. So we've got a 9 16 wrench over here. We'll get those with. That's good enough for now. We're not gonna be driving it anywhere just yet. All right, we got that done. Next, we need to start looking at installing some axles. So a couple of things we need to do is seals which I'm, I don't think we really need to put the seals in right now. Um, yeah, we don't need to do the seals right now because I don't want to, I don't want to destroy them. We'll wait to put the seals in until it comes back from powder coating. So they don't really locate the axle or anything. They just keep oil in. So we're not going to do the seals right now. So the axles we got are really nice. They come with the chop and block chassis. These are Dutchman axles. That's a reputable brand. Made in America. These are the, supposed to be the correct bolt pattern for our wheels. I guess we should probably check that first, huh? Let's check that before we install these um, and then we'll get back with you. 22 inches right there. All right, let's test fit these axles in the wheel and make sure that they line up. That's exactly what we want. Cool, good to go. Let's put them in the rear end. Okay, I think the short one goes over there. All right, so these already have the bearings pre-installed, which is good because I don't really like messing with that. But even the bearings say uh, Dutchman on them. Now, you wanna make sure if you're mismatching parts like this, you know, like we got the, the third member from one company and the axles from another company and the rear end housing from another company, you wanna make sure that you got the correct number of splines. So make sure you communicate with all, all those guys and say, hey, I got the 31 spline axles or whatever, because there there's a few different options depending on how beefy you want it and your horsepower rating and all that kind of stuff. So you kind of got to get it in there and then boom, just like that, like a glove, fits perfect. Okay. And then these are the axle clamps that go on the outside. And then we run some of these. grade eight bolts here to keep the axles in. Like that. And then we just put the nuts on the end. So we may need to, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see once we get the, uh, the brake brackets involved, they may sandwich in here or bolt on the backside at some point. So, um, 
Right now, we really don't need to tighten all this down. We just need to thread that on there. Also, you want to make sure that your axles are the correct length. So I don't know if you noticed, that's a short one. This one's longer than that one because of the nine inch rear end. But you want to make sure that you get the correct length axles. Once you get it in there, then you just kind of jiggle it and then it goes in there. Perfect fit. Okay, so now once you get both your axles in there, you can confirm your track width. Now track width is the measurement from the outside of this flange to the outside of that flange without the brake hats on there. Okay, so we told chopping block we needed a certain measurement. Now let's just double check to make sure that it's correct. It's right on the money. 59 and three quarter. Actually, I told them, I think I said 60, but 60 or less. So 59 and a quarter, that's pretty dang close. Am I forgetting something? Oh, I need to drill that hole and put that breather in there. Let's do it over on this side. So I'm gonna take this out. Let's grab a drill bit and drill a hole for those pipe threads. So we're, we gotta drill it pretty close and then I've got a pipe tap that we can tap the threads in there. And the, the pipe taps are like a tapered thread. And that's so the, the tighter you get it, the more they seal the threads. So let's do that. I think, we're, I think we'll put it right there on top. All right, we're getting ready to install our uh, stone breather in the top of the axle here. So some of the things you need are a cordless drill, tap magic or cutting fluid. We got an eighth inch pilot bit, uh, uh, roughly quarter inch secondary bit. And then the final size that we want right here is 11 30 seconds. And that's gonna get us pretty close to being able to start this eighth inch pipe tap. So the key to doing pipe threads is you just gotta make sure you don't drill the hole too big. Cause if you drill it too big, you won't have enough threads where it actually seals. So you always want to start out a little small and then work your way up. So let's drill that out. And then I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want it. Actually, you know what? Let's go make sure the frame rail is not in the way because we don't want that landing on the frame rail. The frame is 34, let's just call it 35 to the outside and uh, let's call it 29 to the inside. That gives us a little leeway. So 29 and 35. Okay, so we need to confirm that where we put this breather is not going to interfere with the frame rail or contact the frame rail. So the frame is somewhere in this zone. Um, so we need to make sure that we avoid that. So the outside of the frame is roughly 35. The inside is roughly 29. So the center of this axle is, it's not, it's not right here. It's like offset an inch or so. It's, it's pretty much right where this rib is. So we need to find the center point. So half of 35 is 17 and a half. And then half of 29 is 14 and a half. So let's move that to 14 and a half. We need to be in this zone right here because the frame rail is right here. We could be further out, but I'd rather have it somewhere right in this zone. So, but we're gonna do it on the other side, so let's double check. So that should be basically a two inch zone on the outside of that bracket. So if we do that going this way, 14 and a half from that rib, same thing, yep. Two inches from that bracket. So basically we're gonna do, we're gonna mount it one inch away from that bracket and we'll be good to go. We don't have to worry about it contacting the frame when it's laid out. And then I want it I want it dead center on the, the rotation. I want it dead center on top. Or you could say top dead center. Okay, right there. Drill the eighth inch pilot hole first. It's pretty thick. It's probably quarter wall DLM tubing. 
So now we're gonna step it up to the next size. You're gonna get some metal shavings inside the tube, so don't blow them into your gear or anything. Just leave them in there until you take it apart. And then we'll, once the gears are out of the way, then you can clean out the chips. Okay, and then now we're gonna step it up to the last size, 11, 30 seconds. That's gonna be perfect for starting those threads. Okay, actually we're gonna, ch we're gonna chamfer the top of that just a little bit. We got a six flute countersink bit. That's gonna help the tap get started. Okay, now we are gonna, got the eighth inch pipe tap. We're gonna use the same cordless drill for that. So this time I'm gonna put it on slow and power tap this a little bit, but you wanna make sure you use plenty of cutting fluid or tap fluid. This is a nice new sharp tap, but still don't wanna take a chance of breaking it. So you can watch one of our other videos on how to power tap, but Basically, it's the same principle. You want to brace this with your arm. Make sure you're nice and perpendicular to the axle. We're just going to go a little bit and then back it out to break the chips out of there. Okay, now that I got it started, I want to step back and look at the angle. That way is good that way could stand to be leaned in a little bit more so now's our chance to fix that okay now i corrected it and that's that's looking a lot better okay all right my threads aren't going all the way through yet so i'm just going to go just until i got full engagement You don't want to go too deep with the pipe tap because as it gets, as the threads get broader and broader, especially on a little fitting like this, you don't have many threads to work with. So if you go too deep, it won't seal. There we go. That's just enough. I don't want to go any further. You want to leave you a couple of threads so that once it gets snug, you can crank it a few revolutions. And then in the end, we'll use a little bit of thread sealant on there. See, I almost went too far but that's gonna be just right. Now we can reinstall this axle. We've already test fit it once, so we know it's gonna go in there. Just like that. <laughs> All right, now we can start thinking about getting these lower links attached. All right, I'm gonna jack it up. You got it? Yeah. Hang on, let me scoot it forward a little. Okay, we can uh, just lift it and scoot it forward a little bit. Right there. You're pretty close to yours. Not really. <laughs> All right, let me just we'll just creep up on it. Here, let me get let me get this bolt in this one first. Can you pull it forward at all on your side? No, I'm only like we're we're half off now. Yeah, side to side. I know. I just need to get it further forward. Okay. Yeah. Give me a lift up, or maybe we may need to take that link loose over there. Take this. Take this upper bolt out and let the whole thing drop. There you go. All right, now that bar should move side to side a little bit and definitely up and down. Yeah, let's see if that's, we can get it down. That's, yeah, get it, just get it out of the way for now until I can get this bolt in there. Well, I think that's the, good. The bag is that's good right there. Okay, cool. Just move that whole thing forward on the jack. Lift it up? Yeah, lift up and move okay. it forward. There you go, right there. Did 
there a rubber mallet over there or not? No. Boom. Okay, now you can do whatever over there. Let me get this nut on there. All right, now let's get that other one in there. Yeah, because I'm having to hold all the weight right now. Okay. There we go. Here, let's put this upper link in there. You got it? Yeah. Hold it for a minute. Here, just hold it right here to twist it, to help twist it. There we go. You need to rotate it more? You got no, it? No, no, right there. There, now it won't, now it won't flop on you. Sweet. Just lift straight up. Oh, not that far. There we go. Okay, now we just gotta get that one on the bottom. Okay, here, that's what this is for. Yeah, hit, do that again. There you go, right there. Now I can get that in there. Okay, which side did I go to? go now we got the rear end hanging oh, now we can put that back on oh that's yeah, yeah that's okay there. yeah we definitely want to put that back on Do we need to jack it up? yeah yes a little bit more right there a little a little bit more right a little bit more right there Sweet. We're ready for some bear breaks. Let's see if, uh, hopefully they go on there real smooth. You can check that out and then we'll put some wheels on it. All right, we got the bear brakes for the rear now. Should match the front with the modern bronze coating on the calipers. Nice, very nice. These are the same calipers as the front. I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same. They might be a little different, but um, the brackets are definitely different, so. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment there. Should be some big rotor hats. Oh yeah, we got the e-brake part too. We gotta install that. So this will go on the inside of the rear uh, rotor. There we go. Right, we're all. Not the hub again. Yep. The hub. <sighs> Here we go again. What to do, what to do. Do we machine the rotor hat or the axle? In this situation, we could, we could get the axle in there pretty easy. I'm trying to think what's easier unbolting all this and jigging that up and re-loctiting it or just pounding those out and putting them back in all right so we had a little discrepancy here on the axles again uh I didn't figure that out, what, what the problem was until I started trying to put the brakes on. Um, there again, we're using bare brakes on the back. The bare brakes are not the problem, okay? They're an awesome product. But what I found out was the diameter of this flange on the axle has to be six inches or smaller in order to get the e-brake ring installed over it when you're putting it all together. So the Dutchman axle was six and a half inches in diameter. 
So I had to take off a whole half inch around the circumference of this flange. So I had to pound the studs out, which is not a big deal. Just got to have a big hammer and support the backside real good. Um, another thing was the, the brake hats have a smaller hub centric hole in them. And so there again, it's not the brakes fault. It's just a difference between the axles and the brakes and a um, little miscommunication on my part. So we probably could have uh, prevented that by having the axles custom made this way to begin with. Um, had we known what the inside hub centric diameter was and the situation with these, now I know. Um, but it's easy enough to you know pound the studs out, put the axle in the lathe if you have a lathe. That's, an, that's the good side about this is we have a lathe um, and we're just going to turn this down so that it fits our brake hats perfectly. That way we don't have to modify the rear brake hats. So there again, you want to use a, a dial caliper precision measuring device. That's what we need to be at. We still got a little ways to go. We got to trim about an eighth of an inch off all the way around. So let's do that and then we can put some brakes on there. This is some pretty hard steel. I think it's it's probably uh, something that's slightly heat treated, chromoly or something, because it wrecks the bits pretty quick. Machine's okay. It just it's really hard on the bits. A little bit more. Okay, now that one's done. Let's check the rotor. Well, I think I can get the rotor on there. Boom, that's what we want. Okay, we're gonna press these studs in. This tube that I have is gonna be the perfect diameter to land right in the center of those studs so we can press them all in at the same time. Can you see the bottom? Boom, that's how you put studs in. We are getting ready to install the backing plate slash e-brake mounting bracket. So this thing acts as a couple of things. It's actually the, it becomes the axle clamp. So instead of using this, this will do the same thing. That's what that little groove is for. It's specifically for a Ford, big Ford bearing on the nine inch. These bolt holes obviously bolt right up to that. Now, if your bearings are a little bit different, these four holes here are uh, designed for set screws to go in from this side. So once you get your bracket on there, if your bearing is a little bit different, you can use the set screws to basically drive the bearing, put tension against the bearing so it can't come out. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we've got the internal e-brake system here. So um, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a little tricky to get on. Took us a while to figure this out. But the main reason was it wasn't a brake issue. It was an axle issue. So there again, because we decided to put bare brakes on our chopping block chassis, where chopping block doesn't normally offer bare brakes, at least not at the time this video was made. Um, so they couldn't guarantee that the axles they sent were gonna work with the brakes that I wanted, okay? So it was up to me to figure out any discrepancies. And so we just did that. We, we found out that the Dutchman axles were six and a half inches in diameter where you can't get this installed on the axle unless you have a six and a or a, a six inch diameter what did i say so the dutchman axle was six and a half we need it to be six inches in order to fit this ring so the reason is this ring has to come off um, we gotta take this little bracket off and then so we got to take these two 
little screws here loose. And all that is is a little keeper that holds the the uh, the brake shoe in place. So we'll put that back on here in a minute. So basically get that out of the way. And now the shoe needs to drop off the bottom like that. It's really easy. It comes right off. But this shoe has to be able to fit over a six inch axle like so. If it can't fit over that, you ain't getting it together. Trust me, I tried. So anyways, you got to have a six inch outside diameter, no bigger. Okay, so then this installs from the bottom up. And then we throw our axle bolts in there from the back like that. Okay, we're going to just put some nuts on there while it's easy to get to. Now this hole in the axle is what you use to rotate to the correct bolt to bolt that on. Okay, so once you get that started, grab a 9 16th wrench and a 9 16th socket. Okay, now we can put this. Oh yeah, this has to go over the, the axle flange from the outside, like so. And then drop down, and then it has to come up from the bottom. So you drop down for a second, and then as soon as you get over that solenoid, now you gotta squeeze those two things, two little guys together. They don't really want to go together. They don't, like, they don't like to stay together. Now we got to put this bracket back on top before we fully, uh, fully install that. So while this is kind of away from there, you, you fish that down, back down in there. Now that little clip has to hook on the bottom side of this shoe. So once you kind of get it in there, you might have to pu push it back over a little bit, pull, and then get that up where it needs to go, like that and then put those two screws in. We're getting ready to mount these uh, really awesome bare brake six piston Pro Plus calipers. So anyways, we've got the supplied bolts that came with the kit. They're gonna bolt right up to these rear adapter hubs or these plates that we just put on. So there's three different uh, mounting locations you can use. We, we're gonna go with the center one right now. Now on the other side, we had to put some shims. Yeah, this side we're gonna have to do shims too. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, we gotta make sure that that's all the way seated on there. Yep, we're gonna have to do some shims. No big deal. The kit comes with some shims. I'm just kind of wiggle in the bracket till I get it on there. So that might not be enough. I don't know, we'll see. It's still, yeah, it looks like it's still Still contacting the, uh, or that might be just the. No, we're all right. It's clearing. We're just snugging these up for now, okay? So later we'll torque all this stuff once we put it together for final assembly. But for now, this will be good enough. Um, there is a little bit of adjustment on these holes here. If you just loosen both of these guys, we're going to push that over as far as it'll go. Snug those. So you always want to do the bleeder on top because bubbles rise to the top. Okay, we're ready to put a wheel on. We've got the 22 inch Ferratas here. This isn't your conventional C10 wheel. This is a supercar wheel. Uh, it's not the most high-end wheel you can get, but it's pretty stinking nice, and I love the look of it. It's got the deep dish, the concave look on the spokes. Um, I think they quit making these, but uh, you're kind of limited on the sizes you can get, but these are 22 by 11s. These are the same tires that I have on my 58 Apache. They're nice because they got a nice thick sidewall. It's going to make it ride real good. Okay, let me get it over here. We're just hand tightening these right now. We're probably gonna have to take them off again here pretty soon. There it is. Look, we got true posi there.
Thank you guys for watching our rear end installation video on our 66 GMC truck here at Hammerfab. You got to see us put in our Gear FX driveline third member that's race car inspired, super heavy duty, comes finished with all the details, wire ties, painted, uh, billet yoke, all that stuff. It's gonna be more than enough for 600 horsepower. Uh, we also uh, showed you how to bolt it up. We've got the bare brakes that we installed, which are super cool. Yeah, and the chopping block chassis. Uh, all this stuff are some really cool parts. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more episodes. Thank you for watching our latest video. If you guys would like to see more of what we have to offer here at Hammerfab, such as our dimple dies, our bead roller dies, our assembly hammers, and everything else fabricated related, go to hammerfab.com. Thanks for watching.